shows you how far behind I am.
It has been almost exactly four months since we packed everything up, hauled it all downtown to the community room, and we have then moved around from different places to the community center and then back to our own fellowship hall. But it is nice to be here, especially on Mother's Day, the day that we're going to give out our third grade Bibles, the day that we recognize our wonderful seniors who were part of my first confirmation class. So I'm starting to feel very old, but that's okay. But the good news is, is that we're back here, we've got new systems, we've got new things, but I will let you know that not everything is going to work 100% correctly today because we are still on a huge learning curve. We have a wonderful new set of, of hearing assisted devices that we were just put in Friday, so we really don't know what um, is going on with them. But if some of you that have hearing aids that understand T coils and phone apps and all that kind of stuff. If you want to learn and help, that would be great. Otherwise, we will uh, get more instructions and be back with you soon. The lighting system has probably been the hardest thing for us to learn, so it's very simple today. And that's, there's nothing wrong with simple, but uh, it is, as you came in, you saw it was very, very bright, and then we dimmed it down for the video, and then we brought it back up during uh, this time, as well as our new cameras, our new online service, and this wonderful new sound system that we have that should allow you to be able to hear me just fine. And uh, we just want to welcome you here. As we look at today, we are looking at two trees and a cross. And I wanted to, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our wonderful cross that has been up here for 51 years and uh, now has its own new set of lighting that can do uh, some wondrous things. And you'll see that throughout the season to come. But I have not only a little history to share with you, but a little theology to share with you as well as what it means for us as Christians who put a cross at the front of our lives. So today as we celebrate, as we come back to this place, let us take this time to come together by singing our first song. It's in the faith we sing. It's uh, uh, number 2270, and it is, um, He Has Made Me Glad. And so its words will be on the screen, or you can use a little black hymnal. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. To all mothers and all children. Jesus said, come. To the motherless and the childless. Jesus said, come. To all who long to be mothered. Jesus said, come. Let us worship the Lord who surrounds us with love. Hallelujah and amen. As our praise band uh, makes their way up here to uh, uh, their first performance with the new system, the new monitors, uh, the new lighting. Um, as they, they, as Bill climbs back into his drums, and uh, as we, uh, uh, there's still there's still quite a few little uh, updates yet to be done in this area. And uh, but we do want you to uh, um, remember that this is a time of praise. This is a time of bringing God's glory uh, to all that we have. We are looking at that this. Um, Happy day, happy day of being back here, of welcoming ourselves home, of enjoying the new fixtures, the new sound system, the new lights, that this truly is what it means to be 
part of the family of God, part of this congregation, part of celebrating in this region. So make sure you sing plenty loud because the praise band can still hear you. Amen. As the praise band catches their breath, our next song is Breathe. And it is a time for us to recenter, prepare ourselves for this time of prayer, to allow the Holy Spirit to enter in and to breathe into us. So let us take this time to center ourselves and to prepare ourselves for this time of worship. This is the air I breathe. 
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I, I'm lost without you. And I, I'm lost without you. joys and concerns, there's been a lot going on in our community, a lot of stuff to be joyous about, a lot of stuff that uh, is worrying on our hearts, but I want to start off with a, a few joyous moments. I would like all of those of you that, um, and Courtney, we're going to test you on the camera now, all of those, that, I'd like the build, the tech and build team to stand up. Come on, Travis, you can at least lead the way. The build and tech team, thank you, Luke. And we got several in the back, and Mike. Uh, these are the people who put together over the last year, year and a half, all the technology and all of the building stuff. So I want you to give them your appreciation. Thank you very much. And now I would like the aesthetics team. This is the team that picked your carpet color, picked the vinyl flooring, picked the wall color, picked the lights. Got some more stuff you have to pick out. I'd like you all to stand up. Come on, Jill, Deanna, Paula. I will tell you that I was, of all the committees I've worked at, when you've worked on things like paint color and carpet, this was the most seamless and smooth group I had ever worked with. I mean, it took like 20 minutes with about 50, 60 different carpet samples, 30 minutes 
boom, it was done. And uh, there's a few others that uh, uh, aren't here today. Jenny Yasin um, isn't, isn't here today. Um, she's on vacation in Arizona. I was so jealous watching those. Um, who else am I missing? Anybody think? Come on, help me. Terry, where's Ter Terry's back there somewhere. She's back in the, where do you ever expect Terry to be? She's back in the kitchen. So, and of course, Mark is in on both of those teams, and Eric's in the booth back there. He was uh, part of uh, our young tech guru. Uh, Lance has been doing all of our internet stuff. He and I were here for several hours last night. For those of you that are online, to get it working. So uh, we're happy with that. And of course, um, we have Courtney on our team back there running everything as well as... Uh, um, Scott from time to time and switching in and out. And so that has been a real joy. And the other joy yesterday was the church cleanup day. We put down all the mulch. Uh, we wiped everything down in here. We vacuumed everything again. We put a bunch of finishing touches um, in here. And it made my pastor's heart very proud. The, the, the sheer number of people that showed up to get almost everything that was on our list um, done and to make it the sanctuary sparkle the way that it does um, right now. So I want, to, I want to thank all of you that uh, showed up for that and during that time. And I know that uh, um, you all appreciate the fact that uh, there's been a lot of work underneath, uh, behind the scenes and uh, uh, other things. And like I said, we got, during this summer, there's still some stuff yet to go. So uh, stay patient as we uh, figure stuff out and we get the last of the stuff buttoned up. And now as we come to our uh, other joys and concerns, today, of course, we have the joy of third grade Bibles and senior recognition, but we do have several concerns upon our heart uh, that came up this week. Um, Mike Dinkman's sister, Judy, uh, was just, she, they thought she was just dehydrated. They did an MRI and found out that she has uh, advanced brain cancer and is already in hospice. Um, so keep Judy and the family in your prayers as they uh, deal with that. They, they've not given her a, a long um, time. So uh, uh, keep them in your prayers. Uh, this last week, we found out little Brody, who you'll see up here in a minute, has a little bump, don't you, bud, on his rib cage. And so we're keeping him in our prayers as the doctors watch that and uh, care for him. And uh, it's a little scary, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, okay. All right, sorry. And um, we also want to continue to keep, uh, we found out Marissa uh, Dinkman was in the hospital for the last couple days, but she is home. So that is good news that uh, she is healing and uh, getting better. Um, and of course, and then I found out, which is to me is really good news, but I know for a grandmother, it's a, it's a, it's a more of a concern. Derek Zeleny, who is a missionary that we support at his campus ministry, is off to Prague. Is that right? Yeah, for six weeks. I think that is just a joy. That is so cool. But grandma's worried, and so we're going to keep um, Chad in our heart and our prayers that he has a great experience and that he can do uh, marvelous things during that trip and continue to work with his youth. Um, and, of course, we want to continue to keep uh, Karen McCorkle's brother in our prayers, uh, keep, continue to keep uh, Joe and Jill Akers in our prayers, continue to keep Rick in our prayers. It's nice to have Rick in here uh, today with us. Um, we want to keep Chip in our prayers as he continues his health watch and battles and so forth. Um, Jamie's still doing good. Where are you at, Penny? You, okay, you're back in your normal seat. Now I can find out where. Um, so we want to continue to keep her in our prayers, though. Uh, Lane and his family, as Lane struggles with mental health, and uh, Rosemary McAllister, that they may continue to find out what it is that she's allergic to and how that health concerns uh, as she continues to deal. And, of course, um, it is really wonderful because we have, we have Carolyn Tharp back in here with us because of uh, um, graduating seniors, and it's just good to see Carolyn back in here, and of course, and we have Diana back in here today, and uh, so it's, and, uh, but keep them in your prayers as they continue their health uh, journey, as well as uh, Marsha Hetzler, and of course, we want to continue to keep prayers for our nation for the uh, gun violence and the knife violence. The, it seems like it's every single day that there is something that has happened somewhere uh, within the United States, and it's, you know, young people and the destruction that comes of that, that uh, we can keep the families in our prayers. Those that are during dealing with the Syrian and Turkey earthquake and that ongoing disaster, uh, the tornadoes and weather here in the United States, uh, as that continues to be a, a bothersome and a worrisome um, thing as uh, we go into the midst of this uh, tornado season. So keep all of them in your prayers, as well as those that are still dealing with COVID-19 and all those other health issues. So at this time, are there any other joys or concerns that we need to lift up? Anna, is there any online? So I would encourage those of you that are online to uh, um, 
Type them in, let me know, and I can get them out to the rest of the people. So as we now prepare for our time of prayer, let us join together in our unison prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, forgive us for the sins we have committed against you in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy upon us. On this day, we give you thanks for mothers who gave birth to us and women who have treated us as their own children. Help us to raise our children so that they may dream dreams, spread joy, and live in love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, we will go through a uh, I will lead us through the pastoral prayer, a silent prayer, and then into the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon those of us gathered here in this, your house, on those that have gathered with us around their devices around the world, that you may continue to wash over us, bathe us in your grace, give us your peace, help us with our understanding. Lord, this is a day that we have been waiting for, the return to our home, a place where we can welcome others into. So Lord, we ask that you continue to wash your spirit over this place, to bless it to your use. Lord, today we also ask that you be with those who are hurting, those who are missing their moms, those who are dealing with the loss of children. Lord, we ask that you wrap your arms around the moms in our congregation, the moms in our world, that they may know that they indeed are a blessing to this world. Lord, continue to watch over us, to be with us, whether we travel to far-off countries or right here at home. Be with those who protect and to serve, those who spread the good news, those who heal and care, those who serve, those who plant, Lord, we ask that you watch over them, help them to realize what it means to be your disciple in a changing world. Lord, those that are wishing to do hate, those that are wishing to put an end to your peace, who think that by the use of a weapon can bring about their own wealth or their own power or their own self-esteem, we just ask, Lord, that you intervene in their lives, whether that be the people in our own hometown or the leaders of this world, that they may feel your peace, they may feel your grace, they may feel your love so that they know that your way is the only way for we, your people, to live and to survive. So Lord, today we come to you in a time of silence for it happens starting with us, right here in this place at this time. So Lord, come Sit with us, hold us, prepare us, move us, shake us. Lord, we are yours, so come and help mold us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being present in this place, for sharing your love with all those around us. Lord, thank you for instructing us, for directing us, for preparing us. Lord, we ask that you continue to walk with us as we walk the way of your life. And Lord, we celebrate your life with that prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Rest assured that God continues to work with you wherever you are. 
And wherever you are on that path, wherever you are in God's discipleship making, God is working on you to be the best that you can be, to prepare you to be the best friend, the best mom, the best dad, the best colleague, the best spouse. And God will continue to work with you each day, every day, from this point forward. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. As we continue to reflect, let us sing the song, Standing on Holy Ground, realizing that truly this place is God's home as well as ours. Now that you can all see the screens, let's stand. At this time, I'm going to invite the children to come on down and have a seat on the floor right here in front. And I have some stuff I want to share with you. So you can either sit beside me on the step or you can sit on that step. This is a lot further down than when I practiced it earlier, so. See, you got something you can sit up here too if you want to. Well, we're going to talk about wood. You want to sit here next to me, bud? So, got everybody? So how are you guys doing? Doing good? Been a while, hasn't it, Annabelle? So today we're going to talk about wood. What's wood. Where does wood come from? Do you know? Trees. trees. And today in our scripture, we're going to talk about trees. Actually, we're going to talk about scripture in three different, three different scriptures that are going to talk about trees. Because the first scripture tells us that God made all the trees. Some of them just to look at. Some of them to produce apples and oranges, stuff for us to eat. He also made some trees that were made just for um, life, that had healing properties, and some that had knowledge properties. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about the fact that I have all kinds of wood here. So I want to start off that, you know what this is? Who can tell me what kind of wood this is? Well, this is ash. And ash, if you notice around town, they keep cutting trees down all over the place. Those are all ash trees. You know what ash is good for right now? Feeding bugs. There's a thing called an ash borer, I think is its name, and it kills the trees. So this is from one of our ash trees here at the church, and I took it out of my fire pit pile. But uh, it, it's really a very pretty tree that grew very fast, and we, every people loved it. It was a good tree to look at. And then... Can anybody tell me what this came out of? This is oak. I know there's no way for you to really know. This also came out of one of the oak trees here on this. And oak is one that is good, strong. It's very good to look at. It has big shade areas, but it's also good for building furniture. Then we get into some other, you know what this is? Pine. Very good, Bryson. This is pine. This is what a lot of our houses are made out of. This is what the Christmas tree is made out of, to a certain extent. That uh, could either be a cedar tree or a pine tree. And uh, it's a very common wood. It's very soft. This is just a scrap. 
Now, we're going to get into some harder ones. Anybody know what this is? This is named after a fish. It's basswood. And it's used for carving. It's very soft. In fact, you can, I can even make, I can put dents in it with my fingernail. Is that, you know, so I use that for carving. And then, does this look familiar to anybody? Does this look familiar to anybody out there? You'll notice there are none of these in your pews anymore. This is walnut, or at least we pretend it to be walnut. I haven't really cut into it yet to find out. But this is what a lot of our church looks like was made out of. But walnut is another very hard, very pretty church. This was used to hold our communion cups in the pews. They also were uh, pocket catchers um, when you would slide down. So uh, since we don't do communion this anymore, we took these all out. You may be seeing more of these in days to come. You know what this is? This is a very special wood. It's in a sack because it kind of falls apart. This is called sycamore. This came from the tree. You remember the story of Zacchaeus? Yeah. Zacchaeus was a wee little monkey. He climbed up into a uh, sycamore. sycamore tree. This came from that tree, or at least according to legend, came off that tree. When I was in the Holy Lands, they were pruning the tree, and the utility company was, and they were all these were on the street, and I just helped myself to a big chunk of wood. But then I want to talk about these... Anybody know what kind of wood this is? I don't either. <laughs> I tried to remember this. We got this in Korea. It's a very special wood only that as far as I know grows in Korea. They make crosses out of it and it has a very pretty center. And so this, this wood, this tree came out of Korea. And then this, this tree makes food that some of you may like to eat. Who here likes olives? This is from an olive tree. And this came from the Holy Lands, where Jesus walked, and they have lots and lots and lots of olive wood. So the reason I'm talking about all this is because you see our cross up there? It's made out of wood, too, as was the wood that Jesus' his cross was on. And there's lots of stories, and I'm going to talk about that, but wood is very important to us, not only because it, it, it builds the stuff around it, it uh, provides us with food, and it also was the thing that Jesus died on and that we use now as our symbol of the cross. So wood is very important to us, and if, you, if you're in here for the sermon, you're going to hear some more tips about that, and so afterwards, um, we'll see if any of you remember what it is I said about the wood, okay? All right, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this wonderful building with all of its wood and its beautiful cross. And Jesus... We thank you for loving us, for helping us, preparing us, and most of all, Jesus, we love you. Amen. All right, so the sucker tree <laughs> is right there, and I may need to open the bag to get more suckers out. Now we'll see how well this, uh, I can get up, and how whether, whether it's going to be looks good on camera or not, that'll be another story. Okay. I gotta build a stool, Paul. Uh, Ron, we gotta get a. Should you all guys get one? Oh, before you leave, though, sit back down. I got this a little out of order. Sit back down. We'll get more. Yeah, you can get your sucker if you haven't got it. First of all, I wanted to show. I want to show the whole congregation this. This came in the mail yesterday, so that's why it's not part of our plan up there. This is. Do you guys remember when we talked at Family Fun Night about giving money to missions? Well, the Heifer Project loved the fact that you guys gave them $500 out of your Sunday school money, you and the adult Sunday school class, that they sent you this certificate that says, the Heifer Project, Heifer International gratefully recognizes the United Methodist Church of Wilton for your contribution of healthy animals and other things. Isn't that cool? All right. Did everybody get a sucker? Before I go too much further. Oh. All right, well, let's get the suckers out of the way before. Sit down. I'll get them to you. Sit down. There's more stuff to do here. Here, Norlin. Actually, you know what? I think I got exactly. You need one? Okay, I was so close. Did you get one, Annabelle? How about you, Aniston? So you get a fresh one. All right. So, you guys, I need you all to line up up here on top. 
You, you can just go ahead and stay. Just, you, she can stand up here too. Because they've been in Family Fun Night. They have been working on some songs. Those of you that haven't been Family Fun Night, I think you know this song anyway. So you can be part of the congregation. So they're going to sing, and you guys are going to sing also, and they're, but there's actions, okay? And they're going to help you with the actions. So there's peace, make a peace sign, get that everybody? Like a river, and so you do the waves just to one side, okay? So, and then, in my soul, that's the first verse. Second verse is, I have love, like an ocean, so it's waves out both directions, in my soul. And then there's, I've got joy, smile, you point at your smile, like a fountain, in my soul. Got it? That's it. That's the only three actions. We'll see how well that you do. You guys ready to, to help out? <laughs> Gage, not really, but that's okay. I'll, Gage, you and I can stand beside each other, okay? There. <laughs> okay, get in the center. Sit. Here, right. There. No, you're right on the edge. Yeah, you're good. Over. Step up. Over. I know, aren't they? So, today, today they are getting their third grade Bibles. And um, I want to let you know that song that they just sang, that's one of the slower ones they sang. So they may bring in, they've got one that they would love to do with you guys. That, right? Yeah, C-H, yeah. We'll get, to the, we'll get to that some other time. So these are their third grade Bibles. They're uh, common English Bibles, the same as what's in the pews. And it has all kinds of, has some pictures, and it has all kinds of stuff for you to learn. It has some, some uh, descriptions. And you'll be able to start memorizing that song, the Bible book, Bop, so that you can find all the books in here, right? Can you name all the books yet? Not yet. You'll get there. Okay. So the other thing, I told them already, and I'll tell you parents, I have not signed them or put their names in them yet because I want to make sure I spell everything right. So after church is over with, I want you guys to meet me in the back, and we will go through and get them dated and signed and get your name all nice and proper in there, okay? 
So here is your Bible to love and to care for. Stay put, because they're going to want a picture. Here is your Bible. Yours, sir. These are gifts to you from this congregation so that you may learn and continue to, uh, to grow in Jesus. And I did, uh, okay, you need to look at, okay, you guys step down. Okay. Go down the next step. It's okay. Good enough. All right, you guys go on back to your moms and dads. As we come to our chancel choir, they have prepared a special number. God gives us a future with hope. So if you guys want to make your way up here, I'm going to rearrange the microphones a little bit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Today's scripture, like I told the kids, has to do with trees, has to do with wood, has to do with the process of 
the theology, I believe, behind the cross. This sermon I've been working on literally for almost four months since the cross that you see before you came down and was moved to uh, various locations throughout the church and then eventually into my garage to be completely refinished, uh, reworked, and prepared uh, for this grand reopening. So to give you the scripture foundation, to start with, we go all the way to the very first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, where it says, Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then we jump to the transition between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we see in the Gospel of John, we hear the equivalent of what we're talking about with trees and vines and branches. For Jesus said, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word, but I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And then we jump clear to the last book of the Bible, the, the, the Revelation of John, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, in those first two verses, we hear about trees yet once again. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God, and of the Lamb through the middle of the street in the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts as we sing this song, Happy the Home where God, When God is There. And think about what that means for you and your family as you think about your home and what it means to have God in the center of your household. Two trees and a cross. Obviously, you all know that all three of those, in a lot of semblance and a lot of theology, are considered trees. As I worked on this cross, one of the things that you cannot see now, you could not see before, is the fact that this cross is uniquely special in a lot of different ways. It was so bizarre when I took it down and I had, actually the, the, the kids, the family fun night, they started off. They started the sanding process of sanding it down because we took it down, we found out it had been painted black at some point in time. I could tell from the backside that it had been stained at one point in time, but at some point in time, probably because it got scratched, and believe me, it was scratched up even as we took it down, because we put decorations on it. Somebody covered it with black. And of course then, at some point in time, the, um, uh, I can't think of the name of your, your quartet, Fisherman's Quartet. Fisherman's, right? Fisherman's Quartet? 
Yeah. They donated the neon lights that were in the back that served well for probably close to 30-some years uh, lighting up the cross. But as neon is, we decided it was time to go to LED. So there was some changes to the back of the cross that needed to be made. So as I sanded this down in the garage and created huge quantities of dust everywhere, come to find out this cross is made of two different kinds of wood. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Because if I just stain it, it's going to look kind of odd with the two different um, woods. And I thought to myself, I looked at the back where it had been stained, and they had stained it a darker color to make sure that they, it all kind of assembled. But if you get up close and we shut the lights off and you take like a flashlight and you look at it sometime, you will see there are two different kinds of woods. And as I looked at that and I tried to do some uh, study as to why in the world the, the carpenter that built that might have done that, I was found out from uh, um, Margaret Henderson that one of her relatives actually made that cross some 50 years ago as part of the construction crew that was here. And I, she couldn't exactly tell me exactly what the relationship was, but it was some cousin or, you know, somewhere out there. And it was made out of reclaimed lumber when I looked at it, because there were, there were indications of stuff being stamped in it, bolted on it, whatever. It was not perfect. I did not sand all those imperfections out, because I thought that would, they should stay there. But the cross member was made out of cedar or redwood, depending on who you're talking to. But it was a dark red beautiful, straight-grained, old growth of something. In fact, when I took a picture of the end grain that I had sanded down and counted it up, if the tree had been harvested right when this church was built in um, 72, the tree itself would have been born before this place was, the United States was settled, before Iowa was, that, that's how many rings were there. Since it was, a re it was reused lumber, means it probably was even older than that, way before Columbus, possibly. That's the center beam. That's God's outstretched arms. That is the, the cedar of Lebanon, so to speak. That is the, the rarer wood of God's outreached arms to embrace us and to hold us up. But the center wood is about as plain and ordinary, knotty pine as you could imagine. I mean, it had... Mark, Mark even explained, look at all those knots in it. And I was thinking, this is going to look really odd because it's like every six inches all the way up. But it's 15 feet of straight pine or poplar or whatever, lots of branches, common wood. And thus, it is an old soul wood also. But it represents humanity reaching towards God, the common wood that goes from the bottom to the top. And so as I worked on it, as I cleaned up the back, I would realize that this truly is a symbol of God's love for this, our congregation, that we are that popular common wood reaching towards God, waiting for that embrace of the outreached cross span, the span that held our Lord and Savior. And so as I repaired it and as I patched it and as I, I filled in the back of it, I decided that it needed more wood. So I added oak pieces to where it had been routed out and filled those in. And I then took a, a few pieces of olive wood that I had left over from the Holy Lands and planted those inside the cross also so that our cross truly has a uniqueness about it in our sanctuary. The history of it, the history of the wood going back to before this country was even a nation, the symbolism of a common wood and a rare wood, the symbolism of reaching towards God, as well as having some holy land wood at its heart. So as you come into worship, and you see that cross, and you see it backlit, and it just looks like a, a dark wooden cross, I want you to know that history and to remember that that cross represents you growing from the bottom towards heaven, and God's arms reaching out to you to support you, to love you, to forgive you, and to be with you. Just like in the Old Testament, we see that at the beginning, we started with the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. But by the time we get to heaven and we get to this Jerusalem and the mighty city of God, there is no tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's all the tree 
of life. A tree that leaves will heal the nation. A tree that bears fruit to feed the nation. We are those leaves. We are those fruits. That is the symbolism of God's kingdom growing and expanding around the river of life, around Christ, and that is our symbolism for us, that we are to be the leaves that heal this nation. We are to be the fruits that feed this world. And so as we go forth today, I'm going to encourage you to look at trees in a different way, a way that they are truly God's creations of beauty and of nourishment, and can remind us that that is our role in this world, to be a thing of beauty, to think of nourishment, to be an avenue of peace. So let us pray. Lord, we ask at this time that you pour out your blessing upon us, that you may allow us to be your trees in your kingdom, to be trees of life to those who are dying around us, to be trees of fruit to those who are hungry, to be trees of healing for those who are hurting. Lord, we just ask that you continue to pour out your blessing upon this, your this your home, this your church, and these your people. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, there are offering plates at all three doors, and uh, there is an opportunity for you to uh, give there. There's also envelopes out there. Um, those of you that are online, you can go to uh, write a check to Post Office Box 57, Wilton, Iowa, 52778, or anybody can go to our uh, website, the umcofwilton.org, and... Um, Click on the online giving and give that way through your financial giving. So with that, let us take this time to dedicate the prayer, the gifts that you have bestowed upon the church that will be used for God's ministry. So let us pray. Gracious God, our offering this day reflects our gratitude for your story that calls us and shapes us. Your hand is visible on every page and every scene of our lives. As we offer our gifts, may they be used to help your children in need through acts of love. Amen. At this time, we have the joy of having our seniors, senior, yeah, Grace, you get to do it alone because the other two are off doing other things. So Grace, if you want to come forward, we want to congratulate, you can, you can show all three pictures. We'll, we'll talk, while she's coming up, I'll talk about the other two. So, um, Charlotte Brown is uh, one of our graduates. Uh, Charlotte is going to be going to uh, UNI, and uh, I look forward to uh, introducing her to people up there. Um, Emma Hartman is also one of our graduates. She's at a dance competition. That should not surprise anybody uh, this morning, but she is going to uh, Kirkwood and going to be studying therapy. And then, we, of course, we have Grace live and on the screen, and Grace is going to go to you and I to study to be an editor. So I got, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, very cool. And I can't wait to introduce you to a bunch of people in Cedar Falls, too. I've got, I've got some very cool, nerdy-type people that you're just going to love, okay? It, uh, um, so at this time, I know UMW and United Methodist Men. Do you have anything? Okay, I'm going to give them all trivets, just to let you know. So for, so your, for your first hot plate, so you'll get one of those. So. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> but um, United Women of the Faith would like to con congratulate you. And um, so glad with all the accomplishments you made. And it's been a pleasure ever since you started Sunday school to watch you grow and mature. So here is a gift from us. And we definitely will keep praying for you and remember the, the church where you grew up. Amen. Thank you. And when we're done, see me and I will um, get you this other hot plate thing that shows the picture of the church so that you can cook in your dorm room even if you're not supposed to cook in your dorm room. Okay? <laughs> so with that, let us take this time to bless our graduate, graduate and the graduates. Um, I will be seeing them as I go to their parties and delivering um, the other bags and stuff. So let us pray. Lord, I ask that you pour out your blessing upon Grace, upon Charlotte, upon Emma, that they may be your disciples, as they head off into this world to continue to learn and continue to grow, Lord, we ask that you walk with them, you care for them, and you lift them up. For, Lord, we know that you have great plans for each of them, plans that they may not even imagine yet. So, Lord, we thank you for them, for all that they have done, and all that they shall ever be. We ask this in your precious name. Amen.
Thank you, Grace. Let me, I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So as you can, yeah, you can go sit back down now. As we come to our announcements, you may have remembered last week, I told you that you all scroll at the beginning and they're all going to scroll at the end. So now is an opportunity, if anybody else has an announcement that wasn't there, to step up and make your announcement. Exactly what I expected. So, but there's always that opportunity. If there's something important you want to announce, there will be a microphone up here every Sunday for you to do that. Otherwise, there, there are also announcements in the hallway um, on the TV out there scrolling through, and they will be in here scrolling for a while afterwards while we shut down and clean up. But I do want to remind you there are cookies and, and punch and stuff out there to uh, enjoy. And of course, third graders, I got to sign your Bibles. So, with that, let us close with our benediction. Go into your week knowing that you are embraced by the love of God, a love that is sweeter and more tender than any you have ever known. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Let us stand and join together singing, We Shall Go Out With Joy, or it's uh, the fields of the tree. And you, there is some clapping in this, and Anne will kind of lead that, and Joy can lead that. If you want to come up there and shout, if you want to sing actually into the thing, you could. Joy, never mind. Sorry, Laura. <laughs>